everyone. Um, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm coming off a bit of a cold, so I might sound a bit raspy. Uh, also, at least in terms of sound quality, I'm tweaking, I'm fiddling around a bit with some of the noise reduction. So, and so as a result, uh, I might sound a bit tinny, or I might sound a bit robotic. That's just me figuring out uh, exactly how to take out all that annoying static. That usually you can hear if you, if you turn up the volume a little loud. I try to cover it up with um, usually some kind of music, um, but it's still there, especially now since since I'm filming this at night, and as a result, I had to use some of these, uh, particularly the overhead light, which has this annoying buzzing to it, um, which I hope is not too distracting for what I have to say here, considering today is, I want to talk about public speaking, since beginner have to take the class in college eventually, and I figured I might as well I'll give you some tips on it, considering I'm taking it right now, and since I have this little show here, that I'm obviously a little more comfortable with public speaking and having my face and having my voice out there uh, for people to listen to. So the first thing I want to get across is that you don't have to be like good at small talk in order to do public speaking. Um, you can be terrible at like making small talk in the, like I am. Like, some of my friends think homie whenever we go out to eat, not the best for that little, little side chats about, you know, how the weather was or how your day at work was and stuff like that. That's just not me. I'd much rather just sort of sit there and sort of take in the atmosphere. That's for like casual stuff. Public speaking is far more formal affair. <clears throat> Excuse me, like I said, I'm cold. Yeah, so you're gonna have an outline of some kind, you're gonna have notes, you're gonna have time to prepare. Though you, you, it's probably best not to like memorize a speech or like have a fully scripted out uh, sequence because it doesn't sound natural and unless if you're like a professor like I want you to memorize a speech for the class or you have to use a script that's what they say that's what they say you know, like, that's really not the best way to deliver speech like um, if you say go back for example I get to reference myself in this situation those very first episodes of the show here um, it was obvious I was reading from a script right besides the fact that I was clearly looking at my computer monitor um, and having a written out sequence. Like I did throw some improv gags and you can tell when those are in there because I come a lot more alive when I'm speaking at those little bits versus like when I'm just reading the script and it sounds very dull and monotone and I'm like I'm very clearly reading about like whatever it was I was talking about um, versus just having a rough outline uh, and allowing to freely flow from one point to the next as you'd outline it. Like say how I structure the show now. First half of that very first season, um, very scripted. It was, I was reading um, and it didn't sound quite natural, didn't quite sound like how I normally talk or even like I really knew what I was doing versus now where I have an outline, I have my topic, but I don't like physically like say have it in front of me in paper form. I have it all in my head. If you're lucky, speech class will, will might, they might have a podium for you to use, which you can have your outline right there. You can glance on it. So other than I, I would avoid memorizing uh, other than that big tip, most of your other things you would expect, make eye contact, be able to speak loudly, clearly, so that everyone can understand you. <coughs> it's a very nasty cold that's been going around. It tore through campus, like apparently like nobody was in class for a good chunk of the week. And just like own what you're going to be speaking. Uh, I can't remember who like the name of this person was, but there was this um, person like, who like in the 60s, um, like lied and conned away into doing all of these things, like all these crazy high, high, high stuff. Like I think we managed to get into an ER and like the cockpit of an airliner and fly it. Um, don't quote me on that. Some of that might be true. Some of that might be urban legend. Um, all I do know is that that was that life was turned into the film Catch Me If You Can. That's all I know that about that for sure. And that really demonstrates uh, that the idea that if you own your topic, um, that, that you've practiced it. Um, Home, if you feel like doing it in front of the mirror, uh, really, not like I said, not memorizing, but just being comfortable with what you're speaking and being aware of what the material is. Like, for example, if, are, you, are you speaking to inform? Uh, like I said, for example, I'm kind of informing you right now. Uh, a, a, a little light, a little light touches you can do to make your public speaking that much better. Uh, or, per se, if you're trying, are you trying to speak to persuade, are you trying to convince someone in an argument? How do you want to structure your argument? Where's the right time to bring in your evidence? And what's, what's the tone? Is it a more, like say, uh, lighthearted tone? Is this fairly serious topic? And sometimes it's not the place for jokes. Like, you know, I like to crack jokes uh, in my speeches, or at least keep it a bit more amusing. <clears throat> now, sometimes that's not the case. Else, what else? What else do I want? Different types of speeches. There are obviously different types of speeches. I hope you all could figure out that much. I, you know, I, I'm kind of realizing this sort of now, but if you uh, spent like any time in like a drama class, half this stuff is redundant. Um, but eh, not everyone uh, made the 
mistake of trying to do high school theater, so this is for everyone else. Speaking of uh, trying to get back to that formal nature, so unlike, say, you're not a, a, a casual conversation, you're pretty much on equal footing uh, with the person you're talking to when you're for public speaking, you're above them in terms of power and information really should be flowing. I mean, your words should be flowing from them, from you to them, <clears throat> with as little distraction as possible. Uh, say, like, what are the... What do you what do you think when you think like bad speaking like other than like having like an obnoxious voice or sounding a bit nasy like I am right now because I'm a bit sick still uh, sort of like what do you what are the ones like just sort of someone who just sort of meanders around without really uh, not much purpose on the stage and they're just sort of walking back and forth just and they're just kind of going back and forth and back and forth without really sort of anchoring in one place for any moment. Like, they teach this in like a debate class where, you, like, it's probably good to move, but you stick to a point, deliver, then you might walk to a different point, stop, speak, next, walk to another place. And usually these usually do like a triangle formation because, you know, power of three and all that. Um, uh, if you're even free range of the stage, you don't want to be wa wobbling or waddling around too much. For, for example, for martial arts, when we put on demonstrations, uh, we're always told not to be distracting ducks. Like, just because with one of the junior instructors, like, they have this habit of sort of, like, pacing behind all of the students. That distracts from them, because it's their time to shine. They should let them do their thing. The same thing applies for public speaking. You don't want to be um, putting up barriers between yourself and the audience. So if you're, let's say, the type who likes to wander about, and maybe instead of uh, doing that, just try to hold still. Hopefully you have a podium to sort of grasp onto, but don't, like, lean on it or, like, slouch over it or try to or slump behind it. You gotta have your proper posture. You know, the kind of stuff you should have learned in kindergarten. Walk up straight, keep your head up. No, don't you... <laughs> don't talk food in your mouth, that sort of thing. But uh, treat your audience with respect. Um, if you can, try to know who you're speaking to. Obviously in a public speaking class, you're in a room of your peers. So tailor whatever you're gonna say to uh, that college audience. Um, unless Again, if your professors like, so the assignments like speak, if you're speaking to a bunch of professors and you're give, giving like a TED talk or that sort of thing, but I highly doubt that. I mean, if they're making you do that, that's a bit excessive for a college speech class. Um, know your audience, know what they like, <laughs> at least in broad terms. I don't, I'm not saying you have to become super close friends with every single person in your speech class, because for one, in some instances, that's impossible, because I know like some of the bigger universities, like speech, that's like one of those huge lecture hall type classes where there's like a lot of people in it. I'm lucky in mine, there's only like 10 people in my speech class, which is like, that's the optimal scenario. You get a small group of people that you can know d well enough that you don't say anything stupid in front of them. So, if you do make a mistake, and say, you fumble a word, uh, sort of you like, take like you forget something entirely you just space out where like there's a typo on your outline you like you've realized oh no i've made a mistake this isn't what's not supposed to go here main column obviously but hopefully if you've prepared well enough even if there's a mistake on there on that outline and nobody caught it um you should at least be familiar enough with the material to bridge that stumbling block get to the next point that you need to make else ah attire. Uh, since this public speaking is formal, you should probably, I'm not saying again, you shouldn't have to dress up in a suit and tie. I know how much I hate dressing up in a suit and tie. Not because I don't know how to tie a tie, because I do. Learned. Um, just most dress shirts, at least for me, they're, they're cut very um, narrow. I'm not, as, as, as you've uh, paid any attention, I'm not, I'm not a narrow person. I'm a big boy. And uh, for, for whatever reason, formal wear manufacturers have decided that the only types of people that wear nice clothes are to fit and trim, or, very, or at the very least, they don't, they're not, they're, they're not very broad shouldered. So I would say a polo is good, uh, jeans, not ratty jeans, real, like, nice pair of jeans. Um, so for ladies, um, yeah, the, the cut off sh shorts are just no, it's not, it's not appropriate formal wear. Um, skirt's fine, or pants. I assume, I assume, to, yeah, pants are going to be fine. Just again, same thing for guys. Just a nice pair of jeans would be good. Um, if they require you to wear whatever reason, they want you to do for, like full formal wear, um, go with whatever the professor wants. If they don't want you wearing, girls, if they don't want you wearing pants, they're like, oh, you got to wear a skirt. Suck it up. This is not the time. I mean, you know what? Don't make it the time. Like, seriously, like, pants. Pants are comfortable. Pants are universal. They'll provide the support you need. I can make that joke, right? Yes, I can. And they get the job done. Uh, in terms for tops. For girls, guys have it easy. Polo shirt or just a really nice t-shirt. Um, no graphic tees or, or anything really, no wild designs and no v-necks or anything like that. No v-necks. V-necks are not formal wear. Uh, girls, whatever formal attire, whatever semi-formal, semi-formal attire. That's the word I'm looking for.
for your college class, you should be dressed in semi-formal attire. There we go. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else. Do, 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 do. Don't know how to speak. Attire. Mannerisms. Prep time. Actually delivering the speech. You're up there. If you have visual aids, uh, might want to get that checked out. Oh, that's a terrible joke. Leave that one on the cutting room floor. If you're allowed to use visual aids, uh, some rule for PowerPoints. Uh, no more than five lines of text on a slide, and no, yeah, it's, it's five lines with, and each line should have no more than eight words in it. Short sentence, because you're doing, you should not have a lot of text on a slide. That's not what you want. You want mixed media. You want pictures. For transitions and overall design of your visual aid, it's, a, it's an aid, it's not supposed to be the crutch of your speech. If during the creative process of your speech you really do got like, oh I have to, I need all this visual stuff, rework it so that if, say, if the visual aid just doesn't work, like, you know, if you're on a college campus, if the projector decides, oh, it's not working that day, uh, can you be able to give your speech with its at least a 90% um, without the visual aids? Design, uh, transitions should be simple and quick. Nothing too crazy. Um, it should be visually intriguing, though not distracting. Um, so don't, it's basically when you're going through the transitions, stick to the basic. Do not go into, is it, is it called extreme or intense? Um, avoid those. Simple, basic, time it out. If you want to, if you have a clicker, um, don't just sort of like wave it around. Uh, keep it short to the point. You don't want to drag on because I assume you're going to have some sort of time limit. And coming for might be you oh it's at my window but considering you get a lot of air traffic over here i highly doubt that <clears throat> make sure you're talking about visual aids keep it simple what's the big thing what's the big thing for speech citations good professor will tell you what how they want things cited usually it's apa um unless if it's a very specific instance it's apa is the good safe bet um when you're using your databases that they should have also taught you how to use. I can teach you how to use a database search now because you can only vaguely understand how that works. Um, make sure to have your citations there. Make sure they're properly cited because in the real world, if you don't have the right citations for your stuff, sorry, excuse me, uh, you're going to be left out of whatever venue you're speaking. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So for your su uh, subject matter, pick an appropriate subject matter. Um, don't. This is public speaking class. I've said this before in a previous um, episode. It's not the most comfortable class. Don't try to push any hot button issues. Um, you can. I'm not saying don't. Just don't like go overboard if you want to approach a controversial subject matter. Be cool. Be calm. Be collected about it. Avoid cliches like the plague. And be respectful. Everyone in the room. I uh, could make a joke about happened recently at a college campus regarding a certain controversial public speaking figure and the wildly inappropriate response. Uh, but I'm not going to because it's late, I'm tired, still coming off cold, so I'm a bit grumpy. And I think I've given roughly the basics when it comes for a good public, good, uh, good time in your public speaking class. If, uh, if you have any other public speaking tips, maybe um, leave them down below. Might make an update. Might come back later and do an addendum to this if I find anything really good. Uh, that should be all. Have a lovely rest of your day, night, or other. If you don't uh, <clears throat> have a lovely day or lovely night, lovely whatever, if you don't, if you don't perceive time in a linear fashion, see you next episode.